The color is worldly gray, and the company is Sherwin-Williams. This is Hue Review, so let's review. I'm James from The Paint People, and this, of course, is the color review show that aims to review every single color of the major paint companies out there. I'm doing it one color at a time, twice a week, plus other videos, so subscribe if you're new here. Hue Review is the show all about vibe, versatility, and my verdict. I'm gonna give you an overview on the color, what I think about it, maybe how I would use it, tell you how flexible of a color it is in practical use, both on the interior and exterior side of things. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you my actual thoughts. <laughs> would I use this color and how would I use it? Now, before I get into the review, I wanna give you some alternatives in other paint companies in case you're not really used to using Sherwin-Williams paint and you're more comfortable with another company. These are gonna be alternatives that are gonna be fairly close to worldly gray, although they're not spot on matches, so do not hold me to it. They're gonna give you the essence of the color, but the only way to get the real deal worldly gray is to just buy a can of Sherwin-Williams paint. Color matches are great. I've done a ton of them in my career. Custom color matches with the custom tinting, they're great. I've done hundreds of thousands of them in my career. Maybe not that many, but quite a few, but it's never really gonna be 100% accurate. So take those colors with a grain of salt. So what's the vibe of worldly gray? Is it a gray of the world? Is it a world traveler? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if the whole world is obsessed obsessed with gray as a paint color, but it seems like the Western world is still kind of into it. And this color isn't your average gray either. I would say it is more of a warmer leaning gray or a grayish. So a combination of the two neutrals of gray and beige combining forces to give you an ultimate neutral. Now gray and beige together, they can have some interesting interactions. I think the warmth in worldly gray does lean a little more towards the yellowy beige side of things rather than something that's a little more brown leaning and brown dominant or taupey. And I think because of that interaction with that beiginess and the gray, sometimes see a little bit of a greeniness to this color. There is a green undertone that is pretty subtle. To the point that I would almost say in extreme lighting conditions, you might actually see it go the other way where there's a little bit of a purple undertone sometimes. More often than not, it is a bit green leaning, but very, very subtly. Now this color is on the lighter mid-tone side of things. It has a 57 LRV. And to my new viewers, the LRV stands for the light reflectance value. And this just tells us the percentage of light that any color reflects, which translates to how light it will look in your home. So 57 is a pretty good spot on the interior side of things and probably on the exterior side of things as well. So speaking of that, why don't we get right into our next segment, which is versatility. A color's versatility is very important to me as a color consultant and a painter because the more versatile a color is, the more flexible it can be, and the more you can adapt your design around those colors, which is awesome because it probably means you don't need to repaint every year if you have a color with that high versatility rating. You're able to fit other things around it more easier. So worldly gray on the interior side of things, I would give it a high versatility. And the reason I say that is because of the fact that it's one of those forgiving grazy neutrals that can fit pretty well alongside anything that's more gray leaning or cool or the warmer leaning stuff as well. So it just has that great transitional quality to it, which I think is good. The only couple drawbacks I could see with this color inside is the fact that it's just a little bit darker than that 60-ish range that I really enjoy working with, but it's not off by much. The other thing though is the fact that it is kind of gray leaning. And I have noticed a shift away from going with gray inside, at least as like the main part of a color scheme. It's maybe used in a smaller scale than it previously was. But color trends aside, I still think it is in that great sort of grayish, flexible category of colors that is really easy to work with. Now on the exterior side of things, I would probably give this a mid versatility. I think what's great about Worldly Gray is the fact that it does have enough depth and richness where it won't get washed out, even outside. There's enough color there to allow it to stand on its own, which is good. It's not a color that will feel heavy when used on the exterior of your home. You know, that's reserved for colors that are much darker. And even though these neutrals are very common when used outside, I almost find that these sort of slightly ambiguous neutrals that are kind of grayish, gray, beige, sort of in the middle. Sometimes they can be a little bit finicky to coordinate other colors with. And that green undertone can look a little bit questionable next to other neutrals. It is a bit trickier to work with, I feel. I would almost rather go with something that is 
more green, like more green forward or go in the complete opposite direction. This color is just a little bit volatile when being used outside. It's not one that I see used super often, but I could totally see it working at the same time. So what's my verdict? How would I use this color in my home? Is this a main color that you can kind of base your entire palette off of? Is it a supporting color that's more of a secondary choice? Or is it an accent color in that finishing row? I would call Worldly Gray a supporting color. This is not a color that I would paint my living area with, but it's a great color if you wanted something in the dining room that has a little more body compared to just an off-white light grayish, let's say. It has a little more oomph to it, which I think is nice. If I'm using it in a space that gets pretty decent lighting, where it's not going to feel a bit dark in the corners, I think this would be a great color to support perhaps a lighter color surrounding it. So you have that nice little bit of contrast going on. So that's how I would use it, but would I? No, not now at least. I would have five years ago, personally. I think a color like this, warmer gray, you know, a la Revere Pewter from Benjamin Moore. Yeah, I could totally see myself using this kind of color, but lately, no, I'm gravitating towards lighter, warmer, airier colors or completely dark choices as well for that really nice moody contrast. Who knows, talk to me in five years, maybe I'll be into worldly gray, but right now, not for me. And that's a review. If you want me to build a palette pyramid based on this color, let me know in the comment section below. And we got another video right over here, this box, click it.